18 days ago in Humboldt Park. Questions swirling now over the justifiable use of force by police and why he was pulled over in the first place. Let's listen in to what we're hearing from the family for the first time today. Sheila Betty from Northwestern University School of Law and the Community Civil Rights Clinic. We're also here, you can see behind me, the family and extended family of Dexter Reed. We have Nicole Banks, his mother, Portia Banks, Dexter's sister, uh, Dexter's father, Dexter Banks Sr., other uncle, Roosevelt Banks, and other family and friends. Let's take a minute and talk about who Dexter Reed was. He was 26 years old, played basketball at Westinghouse, led the team to a regional championship. Dexter later became a student athlete at Morton College, where he obtained his associate's degree. His friends and family affectionately called him Buki. Dexter enjoyed playing hoops. He enjoyed healthy eating. He enjoyed cooking. He loved spending time at his sister Portia's shop. Dexter's goal was to be a broadcaster. So let's talk about why we're here today and why Mayor Johnson and State's Attorney Kim Fox and Chief of COPA just gave their press conference. We're here today because on March 21st, something really tragic happened in the city of Chicago. What we witnessed on the video that we watched with the family yesterday was tactical officers, plain clothes, unmarked SUV, wearing hoodies and baseball caps, pulling over Dexter for not wearing a seatbelt. These officers never announced they were police officers. And then what we witnessed, Dexter got out of his car, unarmed, and was shot by the police. Based on the COPA report that you all received this morning, 96 rounds were fired by these officers. So let's say that again. 96 rounds were fired by these tactical officers. And what also happened is if you watch the end of the video, you see an officer military style executing Dexter while he laid by his vehicle, unarmed and helpless. Last Friday at the funeral, this family said their last goodbyes to Dexter. Now that this family has watched the video and seen the evidence, we are demanding action. We also believe that Mayor Brandon Johnson is committed to change. We believe that under his leadership, Chicago can change. He spoke with the family on Saturday afternoon. He committed to a full and transparent investigation. So where do we go next? We're asking the Johnson administration to commit to the consent decree. Sheila Betty and her team, Craig Futterman and his team have worked tirelessly to advance the consent decree and there's been a total lack of compliance. We're specifically asking the mayor and police chief Snelling to disband these tactical units that have been terrorizing communities, folks in communities on the west and south sides. We're also asking that Superintendent Snelling strip the officers involved with this fatal and unjustified shooting. We're asking Chief Kirsten from COPA to continue her investigation. We're also asking, if you watch it, the objective video evidence that State's Attorney Kim Fox moved swiftly to get justice for this family in what we think there should be a criminal indictment against some of these officers. We're also asking Mayor Johnson to work with government officials in Springfield to advance legislation related to disciplinary police actions, that keep those hearings public and in the open for all of us to see and witness. This family doesn't want this to happen to anyone else. This family also doesn't want any violence in this city based on this incident. What we know is what started on March 21st as a pretextual, unconstitutional, and unreasonable search, and then 96 shots later, and then three or four additional shots shot into Dexter is unimaginable. And that's why this family and we are here today. Dexter is not here because of the actions and inactions of this administration and this police chief. How many more young black and brown young men need to die before this city will change? 
We're asking for a collective commitment from the city and community stakeholders to advance change. Next, I want to introduce my co-counsel partner, Stephen Hart. Good morning, everyone. My name is Stephen Hart from the law firm of Hart, McLaughlin, and Eldridge. It's a very important day in the city. The city, COPA, the state's attorney have all made statements relating to the shooting of Dexter Reed. It's now the family's turn to address the media. It cannot be lost on the public that the Reed family lost their beloved son, brother, nephew. He was precious to them. And what's worse is that he lost his life at the hands of those that took an oath to serve and protect him. The explanation that we're getting today is that Dexter was pulled over for failing to wear his seatbelt. Now, this leaves many, many questions. Why were tactical officers jumping out of an unmarked police car with their guns drawn for a simple traffic violation of not wearing your seatbelt? Dexter did not run. There was no chase. They asked him to roll down his window. He did. And in response, he got guns in his face for not wearing a seatbelt. To us, to the family, that sounds disproportionate. It sounds pretextual. There is a problem with policing in this city when five tactical officers jump out of an unmarked police car brandishing their weapons for a young man that wasn't wearing his seatbelt. What's worse is the city has a long and sordid history of trampling on the rights of black people in this city. There have been multiple lawsuits filed, class action lawsuits, declaratory lawsuits. They've been filed by the Department of Justice, by institutions of higher learning, the Police Accountability Task Force, run by our former mayor, addressed the stop and frisk policies of this city. There is something very wrong about the manner in which the Chicago Police Department is policing our minority and underprivileged neighborhoods. And this is but another glaring and tragic example of the police policies and practices being instituted. And they led to the death of a 26-year-old young man for not wearing a seatbelt. I'll offer one more thought. The police department in this city often suggests that they have a right to discharge their firearms when they perceive a threat against them. Imagine a 26-year-old not having known what he did wrong and having five guns pointed at him. Do you believe he was frightened? Do you think his security and health and safety was threatened? So oftentimes we hear in unjustified shootings that officers felt they were at risk, that there was danger because someone was pointing a gun at them. Yet when they create the same set of circumstances, they fire away 96 times in 41 seconds. They fire away 40 times on an unarmed man outside his vehicle. And finally, 
they fire away after reloading their clips three times on a young man who was lying on the ground, having already been shot multiple times. It doesn't seem right to this family. It should not be comfortable for the citizens of Chicago. And so we're asking for a dialogue with the city, an important dialogue. We'd like to thank COPA for looking closely at this shooting. We have confidence that they'll investigate it thoroughly, and when they do, they'll bring the appropriate charges. We'd like to thank Kim Fox for her courage uh, in what she has to uh, review in the next couple of weeks. And uh, now so, I'd like to ask... Uh, so Sheila Betty, Northwestern School of Law, Community Justice Clinic is going to speak. Um, given her background on Manel violations. In and you have been listening to the attorneys for the family of Dexter Reed, a press conference Sorry, just hours after tragedy. COPA, the Civilian Office of Police Accountability, released the videos of the deadly police shooting 19 days ago in Humboldt Park. The attorneys for the family asking for very specific changes in the city from disbanding the tactical units that were employed in this case to stripping the officers involved in this case of their police powers and and for the state's attorney to swiftly come down with criminal indictments against the officers involved. Let's briefly show you some of the materials that were released this morning by COPA that kind of animates what happened. <clears throat> I want to show you this piece of video, and this we'll talk about on the other side. What are you doing? Roll, this one down. roll that one down, too. Uh, Hey, don't roll the window up. I'm don't roll the window up. Hey, okay. Do not roll the, the window up. The suspect to come out of the vehicle, not to roll up his window, the and then the shots begin. Unlock the doors now. Open the door now. Open the door now. You can hear the officer exchanging dialogue with Dexter Reed. The shots then begin in total. There were 96 shots over 41 seconds. This is a case where the state's attorney's office says the central question is, was this use of force justified? And as you heard the attorneys for Dexter Reed say, another central question is, how can five uh, officers that are in plain clothes coming out of unmarked vehicles be responding to a traffic stop, the lack of wearing a seatbelt? Something seems funny there, and they want some very serious questions answered. We're going to continue to pour through all of these facts and put it all together for you today on our news at 4, 5, and 6. If you'd like to watch more of that press conference, we do understand the family is going to be speaking in just a few moments' time. We'll be streaming that live on our website. That's cbschicago.com. For now, live in the CBS2 newsroom, I'm Chris Ty. This has been... Extra was lying on the ground, bleeding out. They did not render him the aid that they are required to do. They allowed him to lay there and didn't aid him, as is required by the consent decree, as is required by the law. These are not just the actions of individual bad officers. These are the result of systemic deficiencies that have persisted, despite the millions of dollars that have been invested in police reform, in the consent decree, in the accountability apparatus. Justice for Dexter Reed requires changing these policies for once and for all and an end to the empty platitudes. Thank you. Now we're going to hear from Portia Banks, P-O-R-S-C-H-A Banks, B-A-N-K-S, the sister of Dexter Reed. We just want answers. Regardless of the person that they try to portray Dexter as, he was not one of those. Why does the police keep doing this to young black African men? If he was supposed to get pulled over for a traffic stop, why did they have four guns pointed at him? He was scared. And after he was already on the ground, dead, they still put him in cuffs instead of checking to see what he's breathing. They shot at him 96 times. They reload the clip three times. It must stop. It ain't the first person it happened to. And if it don't be justice, if they not held accountable, it won't be the last person. I really can't explain the pain that me and my family is going through, but I just hope that it's people out there that understand he was a son, 
he was a brother, he was an uncle, he had loved ones, he was somebody very important. He was not in the streets, and the image that they're trying to portray him to be, that was not him. And everybody that know him knows Dexter was a loving young guy. He was very, very mannerable. And I hate that this happened to us. And I hope that they can help these detectives accountable, the 11th district accountable, the jump out, whatever they call them, to be five deep in the car. If it was a traffic arrest and he was to get arrested, where was he going to sit? If it's three in the back and two in the front, where was he going to sit? I don't think that that's what they was trying to do. <clears throat> I don't know, but I just hope that my brother gets justice, not for the family, but for everyone else out here that had to go through the same thing. They should just take them off the streets, because if they don't, it's going to keep happening, constantly happening. And it's not fair. It's not fair to us. It's not fair to the others. And as well as they have family, if they want to go home to his family, he could have went home to his family as well. That's all I got to say. So we're going to now hear from Roosevelt Banks, the uncle of Dexter Banks. Um, Dexter just, Reed, Dexter Reed, Roosevelt Banks. I just want to say, after looking at the video footage yesterday and seeing police officers jump out of a vehicle with hoodies on, guns drawn, if I was in that situation, I would be terrified. I wouldn't know how to specifically react other than to protect myself, if that was the case. But just to know that after he was shot up in the car, he got out of the car and then proceeded to put his hands up and you shot him more times as he fell and then you continued as you added clips to your gun. That is nothing but plain murder to me murder and see if, if if anybody that understands this department in the Chicago uh, this has always been the same thing and so if we don't at some point try to exercise the federal government to conduct an investigation on not just the police that did that to my nephew but the 11th district, which is known for years to have this same history of violence against people of color. And, and, I, and I want my nephew's name to never be forgotten. And I want the city and this country to change the way they police our citizens. Because if you don't, at some point, there'll never be another way of ending this. And I just want to say, I miss my nephew. He was an athlete. He was a special person. He, 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 he prided himself on and being healthy, exercising. And so to lose him in that manner with someone that you're supposed to have been protected by, it just leaves a, 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 a part in my, in my soul that would never be able to be replaced. And I just want to say, justice for my nephew. Justice for Dad. 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 Justice for that day, like at 5.59, you know. I didn't know that that, that, that was gonna be his last words to me, you know. And uh, I'm very hurt, I'm very hurt right now. And, uh, and I talked to Mayor Johnson uh, Sunday, and, and I, I explained to him that, uh, that those officers need to be held accountable, you know. And those, and those officers need more trained. You got young guys that's uh, two years, five years experience, you know. And, and I seen the tape yesterday and how they approached the car, you know. You know, 
and and it wasn't the proper protocol you know first of all the way she came to the car aggressive using profanity and then he rolled his window down then the other the other officer come on the side trying to intimidate him stuff like that you know my son probably was scared you know and and it's been it's been a known fact in chicago that police always target black and brown communities people you know and as my son got out pleading for help they shot 96 times Nice. Yeah, it's too much. And then about two rounds? Come on, two. I'm watching that. It doesn't matter how your kids will feel if they got shot like that, you know. And, uh, and even when he was falling on the ground, pleading for help, begging, they still kept shooting him. And when he was on the ground, I still had extra four shots. But it's not right. It's not right. It's not right. It's not right. And uh, we need change. We need change in the city with the police reform, you know. Yeah, yeah, walking to a cop, you know, hoodies on, on civilian clothes. Come on now. Uh, we need to straighten this out. And I just want to suggest it for my son. I want to see the officers held accountable. That's all I got to say. Got you, Pops. Uh, Nicole, Nicole Banks, mother of Dexter Reed. So let's make sure we stay with her portion. <sighs> Hello everyone, thanks for coming. Um, I just miss my son. I'm hurt, I'm sick. I feel like I've been shot. My insides is burning up. Why they did that to my son? They didn't have to do him like that. I love my son. He's a good kid. He played basketball. He always had something to do every day. He wake me up in the morning. Morning, and he fixed me food. He was sure he had to cook his stuff. And he told me, Mama, you eat something and stuff like that. When I didn't feel good, he say exercise. He bought a Peloton bike for me to exercise. And he was a, a good kid. And why they did him like that, I just don't understand. What is wrong with the police? Why they doing all these kids pulling them over? with no, you know, for no reason. All these kids, illegal stuff, they don't do nothing all the time. They just be outside trying to find their way. He had just bought his new car three days before that. And he was just riding around in his car. He said, Mom, go on for a ride. And they killed him. They killed him. They killed him. <laughs> So, okay. uh, this is James Gibson, tortured by John Burge and the Midnight Crew. Go ahead, James. Hello, everyone. My name is James Gibson. Enough! America! 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 How come y'all hate us so much? How come y'all hate us so much? We doing everything. We did everything y'all told us to do. Put your hands up. Put them up and y'all still shooting us. America, America, America. How come y'all hate us so much? Enough. There's no more need for investigations. The video clearly shows they shot the, they shot the man on the ground. They jumping out gang banging with hoodies with hood song. America, America, America. How come y'all, how come y'all hate us so much? We doing everything y'all told us to do. Put your hands up, don't resist, don't talk back. And now y'all even shooting us in the mouth. I'm James Gibson on the land, man. There's no more need for any more investigations. We want to rest. And we want to arrest us now. They shot that man down in the street, on the ground, in his mouth. America, America, America. How come y'all hate us so much? Uh, miracle Boy. Go ahead, Miracle. Go ahead. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Miracle Boyd. I'm 22 years old. I'm a youth organizer of Good Kids Mad City, and we are a youth-led gun violence prevention organization based on the south and west sides of Chicago. 
Um, our demands are simple. We demand the firing of the five officers who executed Dexter Reed while the investigation is still ongoing at this time. We demand an end to all traffic stops at this time and deem them unconstitutional. We demand that Mayor Brandon Johnson be held accountable for the officers on his force. And we demand for COPA, Superintendent Snelling, and Mayor Johnson to take immediate action and fire these officers. What I saw was police officers in streetwear clothing, blocking a man off, jumping out of unmarked vehicles, ambushing yet another black man just because they can. And just because the city of Chicago has done this for hundreds of years at a time, because our police departments are inherently violent and harmful to black and brown communities, organizers, black and brown people that look like me, that look like you, that look like you, that look like you, that look like all of us standing here demanding justice for Dexter Reed. And I am a survivor of police violence. And what I seen on that video was execution. He didn't just die. He was murdered and executed by, 11, yeah. by the 11th District police officers, the same district who killed Pierre Lurie. Yeah. And that is all. We're gonna, thanks, Miracle. We're gonna, we're gonna wrap up with Pastor Abrakami, who's the pastor for the family of Dexter Reed. Good afternoon. My name is John Abercrombie. I'm the senior pastor of Zoe Life Ministries, located at 5151 West Madison. Today, as we're here, certainly our hearts are, are heavy, and I've, I've had the opportunity to have eulogized the family, uh, son. And not only that, on yesterday, I had the opportunity for the very first time to come here and to see the video. And as I saw the video, I did all I could and basically just begin to weep and to see the, the carelessness, the, the cold-bloodedness of what took place and how that this event happened. Certainly, we are, we're praying for our city. We pray that the people in the city will still be calm and we wait to see what will happen. And, and we're just believing that justice will be prevailed. This family is going to have to live with this. They'll never ever forget it. And so with that being said, let us all be mindful of what we need to do uh, as it pertains to these officers and the ones that were involved in this violent shooting. Again, we are calling for the officers that were involved, the one that continually to shoot. And if you watch the video, there's one video where officer loaded three clips. Well, there's a nine millimeter that shoots approximately 16 times. One officer firing over 48 shots is extreme. So that's that's a bit much when a young man, when a young man gets out of the car and his hands are up and he has nothing. Normal procedure should have been maybe asking the question and the question should have been, put your hands up and allow him to be arrested. But no, the shots continued and they poured out. Not only was there carelessness in the shooting, homes were right behind there and the police officers were not accurate in what they were shooting because they even shot their own vehicle up. So these are things that training oh and some other things need to be able to take place. So I'm praying for our police department. I support the police department. But again, I'm praying for this family. I want all of you that are listening. Let's keep this family in mind, what they're going through, the mother and the father, the loss of their, their loved one and their, their, their children. God bless you. Thank you. We're going to have uh, just one more speaker. Kofi, please come up. My name is Kofi Adamola, K-O-F-I-A-D-E-M-O-L-A. Back in 2015, in 2016, we, 2016, we took the streets for 16 shots in a cover-up. 16 shots in a cover-up. And now we're here today with Dexter Reed's family. I can't even imagine 90 plus shots. That is ridiculous, disgusting, horrible. Murder. It was an execution. I've seen carjackings happen. I know a carjacker will pull you over, go out the back of your car, or get in yeah. front of you, yeah. run up on you with guns, yeah. prepare to yeah. steal your vehicle, or even kill you. That wasn't a carjacking. That was a car tossed style mob they hit. Banging. That was an assassination. That young man, only 26 year old, enjoying his life, was assassinated by the Chicago Police Department. Murder. So now, once again, we're out here demanding justice. 
See, myself, I'm a prison and police abolitionist. I believe the entire institution shouldn't exist. I believe in transformative justice. I believe our people need housing, love, and protection. But the police can't offer us that. They don't equal safety to us. Young people like Miracle Boy doing transformative justice and restorative justice bring us safety. Violence prevention brings us safety. Not five tactical officers jumping out and shooting a man over 96 times. 96 times. So our demands are still as follow. What we want those five or officers fired, fired immediately. Fired. We Arrest. need the police board. We need COPA. We need Superintendent Snelling, who I spoke to directly last night. I looked him in his eye and told him he needed to fire those five tactical officers. That they need to immediately end those type of traffic stops. Police don't need to do those anymore. We need a whole independent organization do, do, who don't carry guns to do traffic enforcement. Police oh should not God, be doing that ever and again, no ever again, stuff. right? And we need those police taken care of immediately because at the end of the day, Today. like they said, this cycle will continue. We want the police to be defunded because too much money is going towards them having their fancy guns and their military tactics to come out and kill us. We need an end to that. They're the 2025 us. budget needs to be immediately reduced and not reflect the same way. So Mayor Johnson, we are demanding that you fulfill your promise, which you went back on because you gave the police more money. And now here we are today with another brother dead for no good reason. Murder. Justice for Dexter. 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 I want to thank everyone for coming out and covering this important case. There's more work to do, but we hope it's a watershed moment to change in this city. So we're not going to take questions. Thank you very much. This has been breaking news from CBS2. As we keep an eye on your world, Hamas says it is reviewing an Israeli proposal for a ceasefire in Gaza, but it doesn't meet any of their demands. Hamas wants Israeli forces to leave Gaza. Israel wants to secure the release of hostages taken on October 7th and in return will exchange prisoners. Israel adds it is not ready to end the military offensive and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says he has set a date for an invasion of Rafah. 
Meanwhile, Vice President Kamala Harris is scheduled today to meet with families of Americans taken hostage by Hamas. At the Vatican yesterday, Pope Francis met with Israeli relatives of those held in Gaza. The Pope called for an immediate ceasefire in the war, the release of all hostages and full access to humanitarian aid. The parents of a convicted Michigan school shooter will be sentenced. They were convicted for playing a role in their son's dead late mass shooting in 2021. Prosecutors want Jennifer and James Crumley to spend 10 to 15 years in prison. Their attorneys are asking for less than five years, including time served. Their son pleaded guilty to killing four of his classmates. He is serving a life sentence without parole. Abortion back front and center in the 2024 presidential race. It comes after former President Donald Trump declined yesterday to support a national abortion ban, instead saying the issue should be left up to the states. CBS News correspondent Jared Hill has more. This morning, former President Donald Trump is facing backlash from his base with his latest stance on abortion. Instead of supporting a federal ban, punting to the states. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. Trump, though, still boasting for appointing the Supreme Court justices who helped overturn the federal right to an abortion. I was proudly the person responsible. Staunch Trump ally, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, in a rare public rebuttal, posted he respectfully disagrees with Trump's take, again pushing for a federal 15-week ban. The former president fired back, writing Graham is, quote, doing a great disservice to the Republican Party. I was surprised. Marjorie Dannenfelser of Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America says she's disappointed by the former president's decision not to endorse a national ban. But after a phone call with Trump yesterday, she believes that he could change his mind. I actually do think that he will get there. President Biden and Vice President Harris made similar arguments yesterday. If my Republicans put a federal ban on his desk, he'd sign it. They vowed to restore federal abortion rights. It's okay. And just hours after Trump's announcement, the Biden campaign released a new ad featuring a Texas woman who is denied abortion services following a miscarriage, saying a resulting infection may prevent her from getting pregnant again. Jared Hill, CBS News. An Arizona court is expected to announce a decision today on the future of abortions there, and the issue will also be on the ballot this November in Florida, Maryland, and in New York. And while police in North Suburban Gurney say a false alarm caused the school to go into lockdown, while Woodland Middle School installed a new security system yesterday, that system accidentally made an emergency announcement over the school's PA system, putting everyone in lockdown. Scary moments, of course, when you don't know what's going on. Police immediately responded, and the lockdown was lifted an hour hour later after rooms were cleared and officers found no active threat. And DuPage County is getting a new crisis recovery center. Officials and first responders broke ground in the new facility yesterday. This is what it will look like when it's done. The CRC will be on the health department campus in Wheaton. It's designed to be the place for people to go who are experiencing a mental health or substance abuse crisis. There will be screenings and treatment options around the clock. It's scheduled to open next summer and was mostly paid for.